Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In for October 22nd, 2020. It's Thursday, and that means home labbing Thursday, and today's topic is all about getting your Raspberry Pi running ESXi joined up to your vCenter. So we're gonna look at the actual install of ESXi. Last week, I went through the process of getting ESXi installed. So I thought maybe this week, we could look at what's actually on there a little bit and get this bad boy added to a vCenter so we can create a cluster of these things. And then next week, I think I'm gonna do something about setting up some virtual machines running on those Raspberry Pis and demonstrate that you can vMotion those virtual machines from one Raspberry Pi to another, which is nuts. That's crazy cuckoo pants. But that's, that's what we're going to cover today. Before we get into it, uh, one thing I just want to mention is I'm about to go into full-on Pluralsight author mode starting after next week. I've got three more, three new courses I'm doing for Pluralsight, and they're all in the AZ 500, that's Azure Certification 500, which is their Security Engineer Associate Level Cert. I actually just got that recently, and now I'm going to do some courses to help you get that too. So if you're interested in attaining your AZ 500 certification, keep a lookout for the courses that I'm producing. It's going to be part of a whole bunch of courses that are purely focused on certification. It's not about learning the larger scope of things. It's about getting that cert because you need it. So just want to put that plug in before we get into the topic today. Let's check in. How you doing? What's going on? What's going on Thursday? Thursdays, well, it's Thursday, you know? I get excited about home lab, but it also means like, I don't know if you feel this way. Like Thursdays, it feels like the clock is ticking a little bit. Like, uh, am I going to get everything done this week that I had originally planned before the weekend hits? Because ideally, I don't want to work over the weekend. Why else did I become my own boss? Or even if you're not working for yourself, you don't want to work on the weekend. So you might be thinking, man, I, I I hope I got enough done or I have enough runway left <laughs> on the horizon to get all this stuff complete because I don't want to work on the weekend. Well, things aren't looking great right now, but we'll, we'll see how I, uh, how things work out for me. So hopefully you're doing better and uh, getting your work all done so you can enjoy a nice restful weekend. Let's talk about this Raspberry Pi action. So like I said last week, and I'll throw a video up here somewhere or a link to the video up here. I walked through the process of getting ESXi installed on a Raspberry Pi. And the process is relatively straightforward, but there are some caveats. One of the things I discovered is when you do the installation, if you don't want it to take up the entire flash drive you're using, you actually have to interrupt the installation and put in a special command that's in the documentation that says only use up a certain amount of that for the operating system for ESXi. And it's an eight gig partition, which leaves you with some left. Now I'd used 16 gig USB keys. So it left me with about four gig of space, which is not enough for anything, but I've got some more USB drives on the way and I can pop those in and add them as a data store before next week. So <laughs> that's something to keep in mind. So that's one thing I discovered in my process. But basically after I ran through the installation, I ran through it two more times. So I now have three Raspberry Pis all running ESXi. Let's go ahead and share out my screen. Okay, so uh, let's start with this one. So after I got the installation done, you log in, this is the first screen that you might see. I have a static IP thing. I have a static IP address set on this of 192.168.1.62. So that's the IP address. You can see it's the ESXi on ARM fling right here and the build number. And you can see right now it's not connected to any vCenter server. Also, bear in mind, this is an evaluation mode. It's only good for 180 days. You'll have to reinstall after that 180 days. And by then, there'll probably be a newer version of the bits anyway. So you're going to want to do that. But just kind of like bear that in the back of your mind. Okay, we can see that the model is a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B and that it has four CPUs and four gig of memory. I know eight gig is recommended. I said that last week. That's fine. Four gig is going to work. It's just not for any production. Well, you want production on this anyway, but it's not for any large workloads. I could spin up like a virtual machine as a POC. And in terms of networking, what's going on with networking? When you install it, it's the standard thing. It installs a single V switch, which is connected to the physical NIC. So we have one physical NIC in the Raspberry Pi. Can you add additional NICs? I'm glad you asked. Yes, you can. So you can get a USB 
based NIC that you can plug in. There's some recommended ones that are going to work with the system. So make sure you get one of the recommended ones and that will add a second NIC so you can split your management and your VM traffic if you want. You could put in multiple of those USBs, but remember you're taking up precious ports on that USB 3 and there's really only, well, there's only like two of them. So, you know, use responsibly. So uh, that is one option to get additional physical NICs on there. But like I said, it sends up a single virtual switch, vSwitch 0, and two port groups. One port group is for your management network, and the other one is for the virtual machines. And on the management network, you've got your VM NIC K1 that is got a static IP address. So that's what's going on with the networking in storage. Like I said, I used a 16 gig USB key. And as we can see on the data store, I've only got 2.84 gig free, which is, uh, that's not a lot. And we can see the reason for that is we go and look at the devices. Uh, this is the device here and we can look at the configuration. We can see this VM FSL, that's what's taking up the ESXi operating system, and that's taking up eight gig of my 16 gig key. So that's just the way it is. Um, so that is the storage aspect of it. Right now, I don't have any virtual machines in here, so that's fine. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy 1.62 added to our vCenter server. All right, so over on the vCenter server, I created an additional, a new cluster here called RPI. So obviously, it's for my Raspberry Pis, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on add and add this additional host. I already have one added, but I wanted to walk through this process. So 192.168.1.62 is this additional one, and I will attempt to type in my username and password. Okay, there we go. And Dashlane is trying to help me out. I don't really need your help. All right, retreat. This is like standard stuff, right? You've seen this a million times. If you've added hosts to vCenter, it gives you the thumbprint of the certificate that was presented to it. Go ahead and click OK, and then click Next, and go away, Dashlane, I understand, and click on Finish. There we go. OK, so now it'll walk through the process of getting that agent started on the host. Now, one thing that I did run into when I was doing this was the first time I tried to do the installation, it immediately threw an error saying it couldn't push the certificate down to the host. There was some sort of invalid value in it. And it turns out the problem was our old friend NTP. So before you try to add your Raspberry Pi to the vCenter server, you need to make sure that the NTP settings are configured appropriately. So where, where do you do that? I lost the connection. Let's go over to this one because I'm stick, still connected. Where do you configure that information? So you're going to go into manage and you're first going to go under systems and under time and date and do edit NTP settings, toggle the radio button to the network time protocol, change the startup policy to start and stop with host, and then put in the NTP server here and click on save. Now it'll save the value, but it won't look like it's saved. If you go back into edit NTP settings, it will look like it reverted back to manual. It saved, don't worry about it. As long as it says, you know, completed successfully down here in recent tasks, you're fine. There's nothing more you need to do here. Now you can go into services and go find the NTP daemon and you can start it manually. Now, what's weird, and I don't know if this is a quirk of the Raspberry Pi or of the ESXi on ARM build, is even if I start the NTP service, it doesn't update the time on the host. What I actually ended up doing was restarting the host, and that's what finally kicked it to synchronize its time with the external client, update it, and then I was able to successfully join my first Raspberry Pi host into the vCenter server. So once I did that, it worked flawlessly. And now we can see if we go in here, I've now got two hosts inside my Raspberry Pi cluster. I actually have a third one that I'm going to add after this. And once I have all that, most of the functionality that exists in ESXi and in vCenter, it all works with the Raspberry Pi. I've heard you can actually even do fault tolerant VMs. Uh, it's, it's a little dicey, but you can do it. You can set up vSAN. There's a lot of things that you can do once it's added to vCenter. So what I wanna do next week is actually get into the process of starting a virtual machine. So we're gonna add an additional USB drive to each of them 
set up a new data store on each of them, and then we'll get a virtual machine running. Uh, I know you can do Ubuntu and you can do the Raspbian, or it's called Raspberry Pi OS now. You can install those. We're gonna get those installed and then we're gonna watch as we vMotion from one Raspberry Pi to another. That is going to be pretty cool. So that is the plan for next week. That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please share and subscribe if you don't mind. It's very much appreciated. And until next time, stay healthy and stay safe out there.